Hey guys, today I'm going to go over kind of a big topic um, and keep in mind some of these topics by themselves will potentially be their own video. So just uh, we'll hit the wave tops on a lot of these, but I just kind of want you to give you ideas of what I was thinking when, you know, we're looking at how do I, how do I, how did I, or how would I recommend, or how do we recommend um, that person is able to maximize their recovery on the weekend at BUDS or Special Forces Selection or whatever selection course that they're in. So these, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put these in, these are in no particular order. Um, but each, and again, each one of these would definitely probably have some subcategories. I'll hit, hit at those a little bit. And, and, and like I said, there'll be some follow on videos for some of these topics um, as, as, a, as standalone, okay? The first one is, is get accustomed to using recovery tools not just on the weekends and things like that, but prior to going, right? Because again, we're trying to maximize the opportunity to heal, to recover and repair. And uh, the recovery tools are very valuable if you've practiced using them in your preparation and you find out how, you, how they work for you. For example, like a foam roller, okay? This isn't something that you wanna learn when you are at selection. This is something that you wanna have applied to your training and you've used it and find out, well, this is where it works. This is where it really doesn't work. And now you know how to use it in the future, right? And so like compression garments, same idea. Like the last thing you wanna do is throw on a new garment that you've never worn in that selection environment because you don't know how it's gonna to respond to you or how, how you may not even like them, right? And so one of the, if, you, if, you, if you have an intention on using these sort of things, maybe trying them before you go and seeing, like I said, does it help me? Does it not? Do you feel it, right? Vibration, that's another one, right? How do you utilize vibration, the real big car buffer, or we're talking about a percussion with uh, uh, the Theragun or the Hyper Ice. And again, it's, because a lot of times, again, with that in particular, the percussion or vibration, and it feels really good putting on a place that potentially is sore. But what if that place that's sore isn't isn't the root cause of that inflammation and you further irritate that area and boom, vibration's not always good, right? So how, how are we gonna use it, okay? And like, like I said, this is one, a video in the future that we, could, we will be doing specifically talking about vibration. Normatech, that is pneumatic compression, okay? Um, if I were to categorize some of the recovery tools as probably the most valuable for their cost, their value, I would say the Normatech is probably right in there for the most effective for its cost, right? There's a cost to it, but also the effectiveness at that cost is quite robust, okay? Um, IR light, infrared light. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of spectrums of IR light, but again, a lot of those, we, we have a red light device that works exceptionally well. Um, we could, you can't get that technology necessarily in the United States without a prescription and things like that. So we had to go through physicians to find this particular red light and we were able to get it out of Canada. So there's a, there's a lot of good red light. There's a lot of places where you can go sit into red light therapy. That, like that, that's an option as well, of course, right? And the same thing with like the next option is a float tank. Not many people have a float tank in their house. But again, we're talking about a Normatec, right? The pneumatic compression. Then we're talking about float tanks or isolation tanks or sensory deprivation or whatever you want to call them. For money, for cost and benefit, there's probably nothing better than a float tank once you understand the principles and how to get in there and utilize that environment, right? That's the key for that is, is how, how does that environment really work for me? And then we can talk about supplements and peptides. Those are extremely valuable for recovery. And sometimes there's usefulness, sometimes there's not. And then there's food alternatives, right? You can't have supplements, what can you do? Well, you can have plenty of food and there's alternatives and that video will be coming too, okay? Maximizing your recoveries on the weekend for buzz. Again, we're gonna focus on anti-inflammation diet, okay? That's a whole other video. Like what foods would I, do I want to eat more of? And what foods do I want to avoid that are gonna create a lot of systemic inflammation that we don't want, we don't want systemic inflammation from the food we eat, okay? And so we gotta understand what an anti-inflammatory diet looks like. Um, and that's, that's hugely valuable at, at BUDS and Special Forces Selection. Again, work on mobility. Here's another one, working on mobility, because when you're at selection, it's not a time to be working on strength, power, speed, endurance, any of that stuff, right? Or muscle growth, you're not gonna be doing that, right? But we wanna be able to maintain the tissues of those of our joints, especially our tendons and our ligaments. And so the mobility side is really to continue, continue to be able to handle those workloads 
And by bringing blood flow to the area, by working specifically on mobility, um, mobility movements based on what you need. Okay. And so that's a really big one. You're, and that's on the weekends, right? Like it, it's not this intensive stretching. You're not going to be doing hot yoga, nothing like that. But again, we need to communicate to the tendons and ligaments who just spent the last week or two weeks or five weeks, wherever at in selection, getting the, the butt kicked out of it. Okay. So the next one is, is <clears throat> sleep and hydration are a priority. And there's, there's kind of a few things of this. Okay. And what we see most commonly is when people show up to selection, the first thing that happens is they get stressed out. When a person gets really stressed out, one of the first things that happens is there's a loss of appetite. And there tends to be sometimes a loss of that appetite for hydration even, right? That's a very, and, and when we start getting loss of appetite and la, la, lack of desire for hydration in these high stress places, that really, really, really puts us in a bad place of not being able to get out of that, that debt or that deficit, okay? And, and so that's, and it, when it comes to sleep and hydration, that's the thing too is these things need to be practiced prior to coming within your training because if all of a sudden you just show up and be like, you have all this inherent information on how to train, I've never applied it, and now I'm gonna apply it when I'm at selection, it's the same sort of thing of like, you don't go run your first marathon without having broken in your shoes, <laughs> you know? So that's that's a big thing, okay? This this is where this can, this goes into sleep and hydration and things a little, believe it or not, too, is like there needs to be some sort of breath, meditation, or prayer practice, right? And why is that? Okay, first, we're talking about SIPE, is, is, is a really, really common respiratory issue, and breathing, specific ways of breathing in a specific location will pretty much eliminate SIPE from happening, or, um, if it does happen, the fastest way to get rid of SIPE is this way, okay? And so, and, and a lot of it too is just because that time you need to be carving out for yourself to recover, not just physically, there has to be some emotional, so it has to be, and it, whether it's through the spiritual, whatever it is, is there's a place where you need to be able to be still, okay? And that, and, and like, it's a way to turn the brain off from all the seriousness of the selection that is, that is, that is really there, right? It's a time to put away all the noise, okay, and really take care of yourself. And so I think that whatever form that comes for you, whether, like I said, prayer, meditation, or just carving out time to work on your breathing, um, I think that those are super important. And um, I got, it, 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 was, it was a super valuable place for me in selection to be able to be still, right? And, and, I, and I really encourage people to have that, have that, that ability, okay? Uh, relaxing massages while you're at buds. Again, not, 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 not deep tissue, okay? Deep tissue massages when you're in those very chronically overtrained environments will very likely create more overtraining, believe it or not, okay? And so if you're gonna do a massage, we wanna say, hey, we want one that's gonna really increase blood flow and can relax me, not stress out my, my, my tissue, okay? Uh, and that's why the float's Probably the best. Float is that if you can learn how to do that, that will completely almost eliminate your need to do some of these other ancillary things. Um, and using a float tank while you're at selection is, is amazing. Like I said before, and then you're dealing with an IR sauna, right? We can do IR light. A lot of places have these all in one or places. A lot of places have hyperbaric chambers with float tanks, with red light therapy, and even acupuncture. Hell, there's one here in Norfolk, right? So like there, these things, these places are around. Um, because high performers use them just because, again, most people don't know about these things existing because they've never been taught to be a high performer, okay? And so this one, I'm not even going to discuss it. And if you're drinking alcohol at selection, then like I don't have any time or place for you, so I'm just going to move on that. If, it, if you feel like there needs to be more alcoholics in the teams, awesome. I don't think that we need any more. Um, we've got plenty. So um, alcohol, just whatever. Um, and here's, here, this is, these are, this is a big one for me. You need to get off base, Get off base. You need to create and maintain civilian social interactions. Like not in the military. I would say, yes, you're gonna have friends in the military. Those are, the op those, are, those are the guys you went through selection with, right? I really encourage you guys to have friends outside of the military, specifically civilians. We in the military need different perspectives and all we ever hear is the military perspective. Um, that's not a place you wanna be. Honestly, we need some diversity and thought and we need, you need to have other friends. And that, that's my suggestion. Okay. Because you guys are going to be in a soup bowl. 
right? You are completely, completely in your own little bubble and it's extreme, okay? There is a part of that extreme bubble that brings safety and security, but from a social standpoint, it creates a lot of problems the way I see, right? We need to get friends outside of our military that keep you and that keep me in check, right? And I think that that's super important, okay? In the same way that our military, like we kind of keep our civilian friends in check in their own way, right? It's, and, and I think that that, that, uh, that relationship is super important, okay? Because I think the reality is, is your family, your mom, dad, brothers and sisters, if they're civilians, it's nice to have friends that are probably likely have some of the same thoughts, concerns, and fears that your family and friends might have, right? And it's, for me, not, I didn't talk to my family about some of the things, right? Because it was my way of protecting them. And so as opposed to that, like I had friends or civilians that gave me, an, gave me sort of a place to be a sounding board so it, so it wasn't for my family so it's just a suggestion like it, it, it's it's one of those things that we talk about especially in our classroom settings of why why we see that because it's kind of discussion based but um and again it's, it's not a bad thing but i think it's super important that we like we're in the military and we see everything through blinders and we're in this little bubble i think we need to expand ourselves a little bit um and uh and i think having friends that are civilians is probably one of the best ways to do that so do these things, guys, and I think your selection will be, uh, would it be, it'll be, uh, it'll be a better experience for you. And I think that's the idea: is we want to have these experiences that we can get through, and we've learned a ton, so we can share, share with others that that are going to follow in our footsteps behind us.